Yo, what's good guys? This is JFZ and welcome back to Let's Talk. Today we're talking about Boom Slayer by Amor Ultra, Boom Kitty, Dov JT, Bluskies, SP Kale, King Tony, Grax, Subwoofer Knots, Jago, Space Dust, Hyper, Scorch VX, Han, Blow My Poo, Maddie 2003, Geo Gamer, and Arb. Whew! Oh wow, okay. There's a lot of people in this collab and a lot of things I want to talk about, so let's get right into it. This level came as a surprise to me, since I'm not much up to date with what most creators are doing nowadays, so my first exposure to this level was Nexus's video, and I was honestly blown away. Sometimes my first exposure to level doesn't give much of a reaction, because so much happens so quickly, and that's definitely the case with this level. This also happened to me with Ultraviolence. Like, it went by super quick, so I was like, yeah, okay, this is cool, but then, looking back, you see just how much work and effort went into it. My first real exposure to Amor Ultra was PP, which, don't get mad, but I'm not really a big fan of. I mean... Theme-wise, not visually-wise. But this was a really, really, really cool surprise for him. I want to beat this, but even with the ultra-low detail mode, it kind of lags for me, which is weird, because I feel like I'm able to run bigger things than this. It's definitely easy enough for me to beat, but I'm not too big of a fan of the gameplay. My best run in practice mode was like 32 attempts, because I'm still not used to some of the weird transitions and awkward timing. There's also some really fast gameplay that's not very sight readable, which isn't bad, but it hurts in the long run. It's also kind of unbalanced, like some of the parts I found were significantly harder than others. In the end it's not terrible, but it's really not great either, so I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. As I said before, there's a lot of people in this collab, so we're gonna have to break it up once again to keep up with all these different parts, so here we go. First up is Amar Ultra. I really like the destroyed city effect he creates, although some of it is just a bit unpolished in a few places. I do like how as the song picks up a bit you start seeing the monsters that are infiltrating the city. The little transition with the elevator is pretty cool too as it leads you into the upper city. It's a pretty cool start to the level and I actually really like it. The only other thing is that I can't really say it's as good as Amor Ultra's other levels. I definitely like the background a little more than the actual design and the little details he throws in are pretty cool too. I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. Next up is Dav JT. Once you get to the upper city you're greeted with these possessed buildings that are partly destroyed and it looks really cool. The demonic theme is pulled off super well, and it makes me even more upset that he dropped Reborn. You know, that collab with Zender game? Yeah, I'm still salty about that. Anyway, I also like the crosses that are blurred to get the sense of perspective, and the only thing I'm not too happy about is that it doesn't look as clean as other stuff Dob JT has made in the past, just like Crazy 3 or his Yangire part. I still like it though, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Next up is Bluskies, and to me this is probably one of the weakest parts of the level. The best part about this is definitely the background, since the block design is supposed to resemble broken buildings, but for some reason it's just not working for me. I also like the transition into the next part with that big demon hand grabbing you and pulling you into a portal, but the arm itself is super lackluster and just not very detailed at all. I think one of the bigger problems is the fact that there's a lot of only one color for the design. It's all the same shade of brown, and in the end I'm going to have to give it a 5 out of 10. SV Kale and King Tony's part is super short, but it's alright, I guess. I mean, there's really not much to say about it, if I'm being honest. It's kind of cool that everything is like a monster or a bunch of monsters. I'm not, I'm not really sure. That, that's really it. Obviously, it could be better, but it's hard to explain why. But I'm just going to have to give it a 7 out of 10. Moving on is Grax, who also has a super short part, but it's a little better than the one before. I really like the demons flying around and the overall dungeon type feel to it. There's also a decent amount of color variety, which is good too. The problem with most health theme levels is that they stick to one color, which is upsetting because it makes everything seem monotone. The uses of reds, yellows, and oranges brings a bit more life to the level. The transition is also super cool where the chain breaks and you fall off from the platform. This gets an 8 out of 10. Next is Subwoofer, and this is really cool. The execution is great, the design is solid, the colors are diverse, and overall it just looks really cool. It really does look like the Devil's Throne Room, and it's cool that he even added Boom Bar sitting at his throne watching you try to maneuver through his hell. I've definitely given this a 9 out of 10. Up next is Knots, and it's pretty different from what we've seen so far, and it's cool, you know? The colors are different as we're seeing some green elements, and they do kind of work. I like the stone aesthetic too that the design has going on, the statue in the background is cool, the transition to the next part is pretty sick too, where it's almost like this alien mutant hole that sucks you into the lab. Maybe a failed science experiment or something, but that's the charm of the level, it really makes your imagination run wild. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Next is Jay Ghost, and his lab design is pretty well executed. I like the screens that flash the lyrics and other things like his logo and random schematics. The little outbreaks of bloody spikes and monsters is pretty cool too. I feel like the monster bits could be a bit more polished, but otherwise it's pretty solid, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. 
Next up is Space Dust, and eh, it's not the greatest. It's pretty basic and monotone. There is detail, but it's not much. Also, I don't know why, but every time I play through this part, I just can't see anything. The gameplay in general here is weird, but I won't base my score off of that, although decoration can affect gameplay. Either way, it's alright, but it's not the best, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Next up is Hyper and Scorch VS. Yeah, I think it speaks for itself. This is by far, in my opinion, the best executed boss in the game. Scorch VX's designs and Hyper's animations combined give you Boom Bar. Not only is the boss's design pretty much perfect, but the way he moves and attacks is almost lifelike. He has a pretty good variety of moves and looks like he wants to kill you, which is great. Some bosses don't actually look like they want to kill you and just throw random attacks everywhere, so it's great to see bosses that actually look like they want you dead. I also love how he changes perspectives as he moves closer and farther into the background like the moves actually have a recoil, like it's so well thought out. I know I ranked these out of 10, but come on, this, this gets an 11. Next up is Han. The second phase of the boss takes place in this hell type environment and it looks super good. Unfortunately the boss is a bit lazy here in comparison to the masterpiece that preceded it since it's just a flying head shooting lasers, but I think it still works. I still think this looks great even if the flying head wasn't there, so I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. Finally we have finally we have Blow My Poo and Maddie 2003 and come on man, this is like this, this is the coolest thing ever. Remember when I gave the boss an 11 out of 10? Yeah, this also gets an 11 out of 10. Not only does it fit with a song like a glove, it's so clean and it looks so good. Overall, this level gets an 8.3 out of 10 for decoration. As much as I want to give this level a 10 out of 10 for atmosphere like I usually do, I kinda can't. The atmosphere is all over the place in this level. I will, however, appreciate the story that Almor Ultra provides in his description because it really gives meaning to these parts but I just still can't get over how different these parts are. I know I usually say this isn't normally a problem, but it's just a bit off to me. Don't worry though, I'm not being too harsh on the swap of the atmosphere because it's still pulled off really well, and the story does give it some help. Another huge bonus is that Boom Kitty added sound effects to the song to give this level a more lifelike feel to it. It really makes you feel like you're in this world, and it's actually really cool. My only problem with this concept is that not everyone has access to it. I know that Amor Ultra and Boom Kitty know each other to be able to make PP and now Boom Slayer, but at least the idea is cool. I just wish there were more opportunities for other people to be able to do this too. With all that being said, instead of a 10, I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. Aside from the things I pointed out, this is a really great Mega Collab. It's well thought out, well executed, and that boss is just so good. It definitely has its flaws though, but every level is going to have flaws. I hope to see more stuff like this in the future, because this looks like it was just a blast to be a part of. According to math, this level gets a... ...8.1 out of 10. And I know that probably sounds a bit low for this level, but let's be honest, since when do level review grades even matter to anyone? Thanks for watching today's Let's Talk, and be sure to comment your thoughts. Of course, you can also feel free to suggest any future videos that you want to see, and that's going to wrap it up for today, so I'll see you in the next video. Peace.